Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and South Korea, the four Asian tigers, four countries that are not only among the most prosperous in Asia, but among the most successful in the world. Nations where the citizens have many opportunities in their lives, and where the research and GDP per capita, two very effective ways of measuring a nation's success, rival that of the US, Canada, and Germany. Yes, these nations are pinnacles of human success and prime examples of human effort to achieve success. Unfortunately, not all nations are like this. While some countries are frankly disasters, most nations are somewhere in between these two extremes. Sadly, no nation in South America falls into the success category because of problems such as mediocre GDPs per capita, high crime rates, and high poverty rates. However, did it have to be this way? Could have Peru or Bolivia had the same level of success as, say, Singapore? And more importantly, could that still be possible today? To figure this out, we have to look at how these nations were doing back in the 1950s. Back in this time, the four Asian tigers were doing exceedingly poorly and had GDPs per capita that were just fractions of those of Argentina and Venezuela. Most nations in South America had a higher GDP per capita than any of the four Asian tigers, and very few had one that was lower than any of the four Asian tigers. The lowest out of the four was the GDP per capita of Taiwan, which, were low, which was lower than that of Ecuador's at the time. Clearly, these nations would have to improve and put a lot of effort into improvement if they wanted to overtake South American nations. Fortunately, they did, and from then till now, they've each improved their GDP per capita by a factor of at least 20, which is leaps and bounds ahead of almost any other nation's GDP per capita improvement in that time. But how did South American nations do in this time? Unfortunately, not very well. In fact, some have even degraded in this time. For example, Argentina, who in the early 1950s was among the richest nations in the world, has suffered an anemic growth rate of 1.3% annual growth from the 1950s to 2016. Venezuela has done even worse, as it is one of the few nations in the world to have a negative economic growth rate, which outside of war-torn nations is a very rare and very terrible economic state for a nation to be in, that was only heightened in 1998 when Hugo Chavez and his cronies took over the nation. This is how a country in the 1950s was referred to as an economic miracle has been turned into what is now referred to as an economic and humanitarian disaster. However, why did things turn out this way? Why did these things happen? To figure this out, we have to look at how these nations developed in this time. At the end of World War II, many nations start to open up their borders in order to encourage commerce and trade. The four Asian tigers immediately joined this bandwagon. They opted to respect the rule of law respect private property rights, to open up their economy, to implement simple and cheap tax structures, to implement simple labor regulations, and to implement other policies that help citizens, businesses, and workers, who would in turn help the nation. They also interacted quite a bit more with the nations around them, each in their own way. For example, Taiwan began to research advanced technologies, such as robotics, which helped it become an important partner to have in the new world. Hong Kong began to attract foreign investment, using its flexible labor regulations and cheap prices as incentives, which helped it grow a stable amount of, of revenue for a long amount of time. And Singapore became an international finance and trading hub, which helped it become the richest of the four Asian tigers. These nations soon became known for their business, entrepreneurship, their finance, and eventually for their success. They had minimal taxes. However, the taxes that they did collect were put in the right places, such as education, infrastructure, and housing. They had good relationships with the nations near them, established by business and trade. And that is how the four Asian tigers became as successful as they are today. Unfortunately, South American nations have not implemented these policies. In fact, many have actively limited trade 
limited rule of law, limited private property rights, implemented high and complex taxes, implemented high and complex labor regulation systems, and allowed corruption to seep into almost every level of government in almost every single nation in South America. But perhaps even more destructive have been some of their economic policies, including non-diversification of exports, which is when a nation will rely on one export to support its entire economy, which, if this export drops in price or in demand, or just runs out, can cause an economic collapse of a nation, just like the ones that occurred in Argentina, Venezuela, Chile, and many other nations in South America when they implemented these policies. An even more destructive economic policy has been devaluation of currency paired with high inflation. This is when a nation will start to pump out more of its own currency, which will have the side effect of making all the currency of a nation be worth less, which can lead to a country with a currency that is worth next to nothing. Paired with high inflation, which is when the goods of a nation start to cost quite a bit more over time, this can lead to a people that are starving and desperate. This has happened in many nations in South America, but none so grievously as Venezuela, who in the early 1980s had a respectable exchange rate of one US dollar for four Venezuelan bolivares. This eventually turned to one US dollar for 100 million Venezuelan bolivares, which sounds bad until you realize this is what it was last year in November, and that today is one US dollar for 230 million Venezuelan bolivares. These are all pervasive policies that harm the citizens of a nation the most. And this mismanagement of resources, of government, of policy, and of economy are the reasons why South America has not advanced to the point of the four Asian tigers. So there it is. What the four Asian Tigers did that Latin America didn't, that has condemned Latin America to a permanent existence of mediocrity. And we should all be buying tickets to one of the four Asian Tigers the second that I'm done speaking, correct? No. Of course not. Because the four Asian Tigers didn't just implement these policies because of a specific time or a place they were on the world map. No, these policies could have been implemented at any time and anywhere in the world. It just takes patience. Because yes, these policies do take time and effort from both a nation and its people. However, many nations in the four Asian Tigers were in worse positions than many nations in Latin America are in today. And it only took them around 50 years. Imagine if, say, Argentina implemented these policies for the next 50 years. Yes, at first there may be some issues and some hurdles to jump over at the beginning, but look beyond that. Imagine an Argentina that is as successful as Hong Kong, a Venezuela where crime is almost unheard of, similar to Singapore, a Peru that produces technology and research to share with the world, as Taiwan does, a Peru that has a GDP per capita that is 20 times what it is now, similar to South Korea. All this and more is possible. I was born in the United States. However, I've had the privilege of living in many other nations in my life. Singapore, Canada, and now Argentina. But no matter where I was, I always felt a very strong connection to my Latin American heritage. This and my, and my experience living in Argentina have only enforced my belief that Latin America can pull itself out of this slump that it's been in for too long. Because if all the nations in South America and the world implement these policies to become better nations in 50 years, who knows what the world might look like. Thank you.